Now let me tell you where I was at a thousand days ago. It's my dad. As I told you before, my dad works in a mine. <sighs> when I got into the, uh, the deal with that top position, some lawyers got involved and uh, when you know when lawyers get involved, some money gets held up. Thank God this company was still paying residual, but I'd made some bad decisions with that position. The position had gone down in income when I stopped putting people in. And um, the biggest problem was there were some lawyers involved in it, and uh, I was running out of money. And what happened was, <sighs> called my dad. My dad doesn't have any money, but I drove home to see him. And I told him where I was at. And I said, Dad, I don't know if you have any money you can get me. I said, but I need some money. I've never told anybody either of these stories, just so you know, you're the first people in the world I've ever told this to. Eight and a half months in this business, I bought a white Porsche Cayman S. My income had gone so far down that I had to give it back. And I went to my dad and I said, I know this thing works. I know I can do it. I said, I just need some money to get some time to go build this thing one more time. My dad had a line of credit on his house. And he took out enough money so I could build it. Gave me about 90 days so I could live, put gas in my tank, go build this thing. I built Team Rhino with a freaking rental car because Rovia Bucks would pay for it. You can't tell me you can't do this thing. You can't tell me you can't figure out a way. I told my dad I'd pay him back every dime if he'd just give me one more chance. Just believe in me, one more freaking time. Give me some time to get this thing done. He did. I paid him back. <clears throat> my dad's dream trip was to go to South Africa. Last year, they told me I was going to speak in Johannesburg. I called my dad. Before that, I called his boss, and I got him off of work. I called my mom, <laughs> and we got him a passport. My dad's never been out of the country. We didn't get to stay in hotels when I was growing up until I was old enough to pay for it myself. I bought my dad a first-class ticket to Johannesburg, and I met him with a load of cash when he got off that plane. <laughs> my dad had his own butler for two days in South Africa. If you only knew how it felt to do that, if you could only see the look in his eye, I just want him to be proud of me. And uh, my dad stayed a couple extra days with me. It's two of the best days of my life. He loved to see the animals, and he, I took him around all the safaris, and it was just him and I, and it was just a freaking blast. And uh, the last day we went to an elephant sanctuary changed my life. See, at some point, you got to turn it up, man. At some point, I'm telling you, everybody inside, you got, you got another level. I didn't know I had another level. I'm telling you, you got it inside of you. This turned my crank, man. They rescued circus elephants at the place we went to. You know what they did? They taught us how they trained circus elephants. You know what happens? When they're newborn, they find a chain and they tie it up right on this certain place of this baby elephant's leg. And they take that chain and they either dig the, big, the deepest hole in the ground they can dig or they find the biggest tree that they can find and they tie it up. You know what happens? The baby elephant fights. And it fights, 
and it fights and it tugs and it fights and it fights and it fights and it fights. So one day it doesn't believe it can win anymore. You know what it does? It said one of the worst things you'll ever see is when that sucker just gives up. You ever been to a circus? See those big, huge, powerful adult elephants? You ever see that little string they put around their leg? See, you know what they do at the circus? Once they're adults, they take just this tiny little stick and they stick it one inch in the ground, and they find the tiniest little string they can find, and they tie it, they tie it right around that spot. Because it knows if the adult elephant feels any resistance on that spot, it won't fight anymore. That's us. That's us. See, when we were kids, we had all these dreams. We all wanted to be firemen and astronauts and professional athletes, and we fought for a little bit. But you know the world told us? No! You can't do it! Stop! You're not good enough! And you fight, and you fight, and you fight. Then you get into world ventures as powerful adults. And we get out in this world, and we got a tiny little string. That's your broke best friend who told you you're an idiot. That's that little string. It's your brother-in-law who told you you can't do it. It's all the people who told you you're an idiot for spelling your money. It's this tiny little string, string wrapped around your leg. You know what happens? We feel a tiny little inch of resistance, and as adults, we won't fight for our dreams anymore. We won't even freaking try. Not me, man. Not me. If God gave me one talent, God gave me one talent, it's that he put that fight bone inside of me. He forgot the quit bone. And he put the fight bone. 